the knee bar, and knee hyperextension injuries. Going back to the knee for this one, knee hyperextension injuries hurt. They can damage lots of different things around the knee, and there are several ways that this type of injury can happen. In this video, I will be talking about the general injury of knee hyperextension, but we'll also emphasize the submission hold seen in combat sports called the knee bar. We'll also discuss the pertinent knee anatomy, the symptoms you may experience with this injury, the initial treatments, and I guess a little bit about prevention. I'm Dr. Lucius Pomerantz, board certified orthopedic surgeon, black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and former competitor in mixed martial arts. I have the goal of providing accessible information about how our bodies move and what happens when they break down. I hope to improve your knowledge, reduce your anxiety about injuries, and encourage you all to stay active as I'm a big believer in finding balance in life through the mind-body connection. I use combat sports as an example of some of the extremes we can put our bodies through. To really understand knee hyperextension injuries, we must start with the anatomy. The anatomy of the knee is complex and can explain why the knee is frequently injured. The important anatomy for this video is primarily in the back of the knee, so that will be the focus. First, the bones. You have the big femur bone meeting up with the tibia or shin bone and somewhat indirectly to the little fibula bone, which does not bear much weight, but it is a place where important ligaments attach. Extension of the knee just means that the knee is straight, while flexion is when the knee is bent, bringing your heel towards your bottom. The soft or non-bone structures around the knee are very important for knee stability, as the bones of the knee are essentially a round ball on top of a flat table, not super stable on its own. But with soft tissues, the knee joint becomes much more stable and it is really remarkable what the knee can do for us. The important ligaments about the knee include the lateral collateral ligament, the medial collateral ligament, anterior cruciate ligament, and the posterior cruciate ligament. They are the major ligaments that support the side to side and front to back stability of the knee. There are other described ligaments, including at the back of the knee, but we don't really need to get into those details. Then there are the menisci. I have a whole separate video about these, check it out if you can, but they are C-shaped structures that add to the stability of the knee and provide some shock absorption. Lastly, you have the muscles in the back of the knee. These muscles that cross the knee joint contribute to the stability of the knee, especially when trying to prevent a knee hyperextension injury. These include the hamstrings, see my whole other separate video on those, the gastrocnemius or calf muscle, and smaller muscles like the popliteus. The injury, when the knee is forced into extension, bad things can start to happen. Hyperextension can happen with a misstep, such as misjudging the depth when you're putting your leg down on the ground or stepping into a hole and not expecting it. It can also happen with a big jump or fall and landing on your legs with extended knees. It can also happen with the knee bar submission seen in combat sports such as jujitsu or sambo or mixed martial arts. The attacker is securing their opponent's leg and isolating the knee joint by controlling the structures above and below the knee joint. Usually this is done by the attacker using their legs to control the hips and their arms to control the ankle and foot. Then they can extend their bodies, forcing their hips into the femur and then pulling the lower leg in the opposite direction. In situations like the knee bar, an eccentric load is placed through the muscles in the back of the knee. They will be contracting, trying to flex the knee, but they will also be lengthening. This is the classic situation for tendon or muscle injuries in general. The hamstrings are the most powerful knee flexor, and if the forces stretching these muscles exceed their ability to hold up, tears can occur. Theoretically, any muscle or tendon that crosses the knee is susceptible to injury when the knee is being forced into extension. There's also this cool variation on the knee bar that should be discussed. The attacker's body is actually controlling above the opponent's hips. We learned a little bit about this in the hamstring video, but to reiterate here, the hamstrings cross the hips and the knee. By keeping the hip flexed and also extending the knee, this particular attack really goes after those hamstrings. As the joint starts to extend past its normal range of motion, or hyperextend, the ligaments start to be stretched. If you picture the front of the knee closing and the back of the knee being forced open, 
you can imagine how all of those ligaments will be stressed. Studies have shown that any of the four major ligaments can be injured by this type of injury. With the knee bar, and sometimes that awkward landing, there's also a force that is translating the tibia bone forwards in relation to the femur. This can tear the anterior cruciate ligament, ACL, as its main job is to prevent this exact thing from happening. If multiple ligaments tear, the knee joint can then dislocate. A dislocated knee is a catastrophic injury. Other than multiple knee ligaments needing to be repaired and reconstructed, there are relatively high rates of nerve or even blood vessel injury. Getting a dislocated knee joint reduced quickly is crucial, but should be done by a trained specialist in the hospital setting. If there's enough force going through the knee joint, then the bones can start breaking too. I'm not familiar with a situation where a knee bar submission caused fractures, other than ligaments tearing at their connection to the bone, but certainly hard landings could cause the bones around the knee to break. Fortunately, in the realm of sports, these catastrophic injuries are rare, and usually injuries are mainly strains or sprains of the soft tissues. Obviously, bad things can happen. The symptoms. One may feel a pop. This could be a tendon or ligament injury. There can be pain. Depending on the tissues injured, often there is swelling and then bruising that can develop over several days after the injury. It may be difficult to walk when the knee flexor muscles like the hamstrings are injured it hurts to flex the knee. But there is also pain with knee extension as the injured tissues are being stretched. If the ligaments are just sprained, it will be painful to put weight down through the leg. However, if ligaments are torn, then there may be instability of the knee joint, where you can actually feel the bones sliding past each other in a weird way. Painful popping and clicking or a catching sensation within knee range of motion could be a sign that there is a meniscal tear. Again, if there is a knee dislocation, go to the emergency department without delay. Treatment. This section will not be very detailed because of the variability of things that could be injured. If it is a strain or sprain, an initial period of rest, ice, compression, and elevation is helpful. And after a few days, gentle range of motion should be started. Often, physical therapy is necessary to rehab even from the more simple strains or sprains, and they can help speed recovery, regain function, and help prevent new injuries. Sometimes, if the injury is bad, surgery may be necessary. Which surgery is necessary is dependent on which structures are injured. You can see my recent hamstring video about those or my previously mentioned video about meniscal injuries. Ligaments, if fully torn, may need to be treated surgically, especially the ACL or an area called the posterior lateral corner. The recovery. Recovery is also dependent on which structures are injured. Strains of muscle or tendon can take two to eight weeks to feel better, while ligament injuries sometimes take longer. Recovery from surgery can take up to a year, depending on what is done. Prevention, always worth discussing prevention, but a lot of things can be out of your control. Some things that are in your control are to tap early if caught in an knee bar. You could watch your step. Falling from height should be avoided. And well, have strong hamstrings along with good overall muscle balance. So there you have it, the knee bar, knee hyperextension injuries, sort of summarized. I'm Dr. Lucius Pomerantz, orthopedic surgeon, combat sports athlete. If you enjoyed this video, please do not forget to like and share and subscribe.